Hey everybody, what's going on? Um, no problems here with my Navien, but I have yet another Navien uh, video. I swear I should be sponsored by these people. But this one is more of preventative slash tips, things that you could do before the winter comes. Um, I'm just going to share some of the most common things that I run into. Luckily, it's not too many. Um, once I work the kinks out of this system, um, I don't want to say the systems are straightforward, but I feel like they're pretty straightforward, I guess, to work on. Um, so let me turn this around and kind of show you the unit instead of myself. That way you get a better view of what I'm talking about. So here's my Navien that you see in all of my other videos. If you haven't checked those out yet, please do me a favor, head to my channel and check them out. Uh, maybe it can provide you with some awesome information. Um, but back to the tips. So I've noticed there's been a couple of different error codes that seem to come up in the wintertime. Um, one has to do with the uh, exhaust from the unit when it gets extremely cold. I'll get onto that a little later. Um, the other one in my other videos that you've seen is E351, um, which is the water pressure in the system has not uh, maintained what it's supposed to be at. And the way you fix that, again, if you want to see a more in-depth um, video, please head to my channel. But it just has to do with something called force filling. And that will increase the PSI on your LCD screen. 12.4 is pretty good. So let me take this off real quick. That way we can get to the error codes. All right. So we got the front panel off where it lists all of the error codes. Um, the one that I was mentioning before, you see right there in the middle, E351. Um, I actually have a video on that. Go and check that out. That's a pretty common one. Um, I'm not a mechanic, so I'm not quite sure the exact reason for it. But to be honest with you, ever since I fixed it the way that I fixed it, I have yet to have another error code knock on wood. So the other one that I see a lot in the wintertime is E110, abnormal air pressure. Now, what should happen, if I remember correctly, is if you have no heat um, and you come down and on the LCD screen it says E110, or sometimes I've even say, seen it uh, saying air, A-I-R. And that could be two different things. Um, in my experience, at least number one is this little nut here. Okay. Is where the air comes into the system. Okay. So if that screen right here is clogged, you need to go ahead and loosen this, uh, little screw there and that'll slide right out. There could be a lot of small debris in there, just random things that made their way in. Um, and that could be one of them, but I'll head outside and I'll show you the one, uh, that I find sets that error code off the most. Just as a quick side note, I'm out here on the outside by the foundation. And if you see this little knob here, knob looking thing, and it says Navian on it, that's actually an outdoor thermostat. And again, there's another video on my channel briefly describing on how to install it. And that is a very, very useful thing um, because sometimes what happens is if it gets really cold out, the hot water doesn't get hot enough because it's already preset to whatever it was. So obviously the colder the temperature gets, the hotter that water has to be to keep up with what your heating demands are. And if it's not at the correct temperature and there's actually a part in the booklet that shows you what the correct temperature should be based on all these different things, including outside temperature. Um, if it's not at the right temperature, the water's not hot enough to keep up with heating demands. What this little device here does is it senses the outside temperature and tells the furnace uh, what the correct temperature should be. That way, if it's warmer outside, it's not overheating the water for no reason and wasting energy. And as well as the opposite, that if it is extremely cold out, uh, your furnace isn't only making 150 degree water, let's say, as opposed to it's supposed to be 200 and change, so it automatically changes it for you. Uh, very helpful and energy efficient. So now we're at the point of the foundation where the intake and the exhaust for the system uh, are obviously evident here. So what I find a lot is in the uh, winter time, when it gets extremely cold, when the exhaust comes out, it actually, I don't want to say it freezes, but it kind of gets a snowy like texture on it. And what that does is it blocks the vent. 
and the vent cannot um, exhaust the, the uh, flue gas correctly. And that's a really good feature to have because obviously you don't want gas backing up into your home, uh, gas exhaust rather, backing up into your home. So I've come out here and there's literally just been maybe a little bit right here, but it's just enough to set that system off and hit that safety measure um, to shut your system off. That way it doesn't back up into your house. So there is one more thing that really you should be doing at least every year. It doesn't really have to do with the winter time. Um, but you do want to flush your system. Now, I have not done a video on it yet because I do not feel comfortable enough telling other people how to do it because my experience, it worked and it did what it was supposed to, but it was kind of a figure it out as you go. And I'd rather make a clear and concise video letting everybody know how to do it before, you know, I, I start throwing random stuff out there. So I may have a video with that the next time I do it. Um, but the general overview is when your heat exchanger works all the time, there's sediment that builds up in there. Now, you got to get the sediment out because if not, it can start corroding your heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is what makes everything hot. They're very good quality. They're made out of stainless steel, so they can last you a long time if you take care of it correctly. So the general idea is you want to take white vinegar with warm water and you need a pump. To pump it into the system it goes around 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 the whole system and then it spits out back into the bucket and the cycle continues now over time you know an hour two hours however long you decide to do it you'll start seeing that sediment in the bucket and it, it it'll surprise you now it worked for me like i said but the problem that i had was i did the hot water side that comes out of your faucets but then from what i read after i did it you're not supposed to do the hot water side that goes to your baseboards that's supposedly a closed system now i did it and once i did it i started hearing a lot of sloshing around in the baseboards the water sloshing around and you know a lot of knocking and just noises you don't want to hear and so i essentially just with a hope and a prayer hope they would go away but then i also did some more research and you could purge the air from your system i did that a couple times and saw the air actually coming out and after that point and doing a little bit of force filling, it actually worked. So again, I'll probably do a video, but I want to make sure I know 100% on what I'm doing and that it works to make a clear and concise video before I tell you guys how to do it on your system. Now, other than those two, the E351 and the E110, to be honest with you, I have not had a lot of issues. Um, thank God. Um, they're actually pretty reliable. Like I said, once you work the kinks out, if you have any kinks, they're actually very reliable. And I'm, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you, I like them more than a regular furnace and a regular water heater. I happen to have a combi boiler. Some of them don't, some are just hot water heaters. Um, but the combi boiler, I feel like is a really, really great piece of equipment. And um, if you're looking to do a furnace change, um, I would definitely look into how much more it would cost to do the combi boiler. Um, as again, it's very energy efficient and it's actually pretty straightforward uh, to work on in my experience and very reliable. Um, if you like these tips, um, if they were helpful to you, please leave a like, uh, drop a comment, let me know if they helped you and thank you for watching.